Hey guys, now before I start this video, I want to make a few things clear. Yes, I am a Real Madrid fan and no, I'm not a Barcelona hater. I hated those moments when Barcelona beat Real Madrid and my friends used to take piss out of me and that's a normal thing. But in general, I respect Barcelona as a football club. They have had one of the fiercest teams in football. They won the treble twice. Lionel Messi used to play for them and La Masia, it seems, is the best youth academy in football. And most football clubs would be content to have even one of those things. So there's no denying the greatness of this club and I acknowledge that. But in this video, I will talk about the recent El Clasico and will try to address the elephant in the room and my thoughts about the whole controversy. So without any further ado, let's Let's begin our video. Now, obviously, I'll talk about the match, performance of both the teams, and of course, that goal line clearance controversy. But let me address something first. See, Real Madrid versus Barcelona, the El Clasico, as they say, is not a regular match. It is the biggest match that Spanish football has to offer. Now, that means something. Football fans wait for this match. It boasts the best players, best young talents. It has an enormous viewership. Some of the great coaches have been on the touchline for these games. There is a background to this, which attracts football watchers. And La Liga, for obvious reasons, milks that. They market their league saying, we have the El Clasico, come. Watch us. And I don't have the numbers right now, nor do I want to disrespect any other La Liga team, but I can assume that a majority of global La Liga watchers are Real Madrid and Barcelona fans. We can say that both these teams are a major reason why La Liga has this kind of viewership and is considered the second best league in football behind Premier League. So my point is, it's not any other football match. And when your league have this benefit of boasting such legendary clubs, why in the world are you not willing to improve the standards of your league? It's gonna benefit everybody involved. People are already watching La Liga for Real and Barca, yes, but there are teams like Atleti, Sevilla, Athletic Bilbao, now Girona, Valencia, Villarreal. There are these clubs with history and great background who already has a fan base and it is in the hands of the authorities to take it up from here. It's up to them to improve the refereeing decisions, to bring in the latest technologies, to match the viewing standards with that of the best leagues. And it can be a controversial take, but La Liga has potential to be the best footballing league in the world. You remember these matches? Yes, the anticipation, the hype of club football peaked here and it has now shifted from this to this. And Javier Tebas is doing everything to keep it that way. Which brings us to my next and the most important point. In 27th minute, the score was 1-1, the match was well balanced, a corner was taken, the ball went to Lamine Yamal and there was a cheeky flip by Lamine towards the goal. Andre Lunen avoided the ball going past him, but it was not clear whether the ball crossed the line or not. Barca players were demanding the goal, referee waited for a while, spoke with people in the VAR room, then gave a goal and asked to continue the game. A huge controversy in the game. Now La Liga does not have a goal line technology. Now what happens is, in a scenario like this, when there is a goal line technology and if the ball crosses the line, the referee gets a notification in his watch and later everyone gets to see the graphics and normally people are content with the decision. Now La Liga as per the internet cannot afford goal line technology, which apparently is worth 3.5 million euros and you would be shocked to hear that La Liga is the only top league in Europe which doesn't have it. Now while all of this was happening, the players, including the Real Madrid players as well, were indicating referee towards his watch and asking for the decision and the referee was like, I don't know dude, they didn't give that watch to me what they are giving in the Premier League. Badge grey long. Anyways, another funny thing happened there. Javier Tebas is the La Liga president and while all of this was happening, he started tweeting articles showing that goal line technology has made mistakes in the past. Yeah, he did that. Isn't that a crazy thing to do by a president? It's a joke, dude. It's like, because the water can still touch part of your body, there is no point taking an umbrella out in the rain. I know it's a bad joke, but Tebas is the one who started it. Anyways, did you know that Premier League have had the goal line technology since 2014? That's like 10 years before. And Bundesliga, Ligue 1, Serie A, and even the Eredivisie adopted it by 2015. And La Liga's argument for not having it is that it will cost them around 4 million to get the license from FIFA and install the cameras in the stadiums. Now, according to Statista, La Liga till now have earned 3,400 million euros in 2022-23 campaign. That's a thousand million more than Serie A and 1500 million more than Ligue 1. Why can't you spare 4 million just to maintain the standards, just to keep things simple, just to avoid controversies? But then again, there's a lot that La Liga can improve. And I'll talk about that in another video because I want to discuss another important point here. And I have to interrupt and say this, that share your thoughts. I don't have a lot of subscribers and I respond to every single comment. So please share your thoughts. I want to know what you guys are thinking. Now let's get back. Now I'm seeing a lot of Barca fans hating on Real Madrid and saying that it is Real Madrid who don't want goal line technology so that they can get decisions in their favor. Now let me clarify, it's not up to Real Madrid to get the technology or not. And secondly, if there is something that Real Madrid and Florentino Perez wants, Javier Tebas would make sure that he does the opposite. That's the kind of love he has for Madrid and Perez. So stop that already. Secondly, Real Madrid and their fans have been shouting about the refereeing standards of La Liga for I don't know how long. 
they specifically made videos on Real Madrid TV about the decisions that went against them and they got criticized like they were showing something from the dark web. They have been saying that La Liga needs to improve their standards and once it happens to others, you will get to know the pain. But no one gave a thought. But it's never a problem unless Real Madrid gets a decision in their favour. And once that happens, everyone is corrupt. La Liga is corrupt, referees are corrupt, Perez runs football, hand the title to Real Madrid already. I mean, there's no need for this double standards. We can all agree that refereeing in La Liga, the VAR situation, all of this can improve. I hated what happened in the Valencia game when referee blew the final whistle, when Real Madrid was in clear attacking position and scored the goal. But there is nothing we can do. Some decisions will go in your favour and some against. Improvement is needed and I hope that comes soon. Now my thoughts on both the controversies. See, first up, penalty was a penalty. Stop it, stop it right now. Kubarsi's leg was out, Vasquez got a touch and he would definitely go for a fall. For a referee to not give that a penalty, the contact have to be very minimal or there has to be no contact, just acting. Which was not the case here. You give any attacker that sort of a chance and he'll take it and referee will be obliged to give a penalty. So let's not dwell much into that. And just for the sake of it, here are some short clips by the pundits. If I speak, they may sanction me. The images are there. See, we haven't heard your thoughts on the game. Wrong. <laughs> okay, <that's good. laughs> Again? You know, the, we've just seen all the highlights. I yeah. mean, you can't give the goal. It's definitely a penalty kick. Yes. <laughs> and they've lost three goals. Whose fault's that? The referee? No. Come no. on. The other thing, the Kubarsi on Lucas Vasquez for the penalty, which I don't know. I, uh, you can say Lucas Vasquez played for it, but... Well, I don't. Uh, for me, it's a penalty every day. I, I think it's, it's just, a penalty. Yeah, his I, legs is there, like Kubasi's leg. Next yeah. time he will learn to stay still and his legs with his body, <laughs> not extend his leg. Uh, so I don't think that Barca was betrayed as much in this decision. Now that goal line clearance, see, I'll be honest, I cannot say that it was not a goal. Maybe it was, or maybe Lunin just got the ball out in time. In some images, the ball doesn't look like it has crossed the line, and some images, it's looking like it has gone in. Me and you sitting behind a monitors cannot make a decision on that. The referee was in discussion with his team and whatever they discussed, he decided not to give the goal. And later the news came in that said that Canal Plus somehow was able to identify that the ball didn't cross the goal line. There was a similar kind of communication from Bean Sports as well. So can we say that it was not a goal? No. There was nothing shown to the fans, so on what basis can we judge their decisions? Sadly, the only thing that fans can do is to accept what referee decided. However, I'll share a few clips by the pundits. For, for what it's worth, looking at this real time, my initial reaction was that that crossed the line. But as you see the replays, nothing is conclusive. Nothing's definitive. And I'll echo everything that was said right here in the studio yesterday. While I felt it crossed the line, if you don't have that conclusive look at it, that conclusive angle, the ruling on the field has to stand. You, that cannot be changed. Thick. For However, I did not, I, I don't have an issue with that. If you don't see clearly crossing the line, if there's no definitive picture, you don't no. get it, right? There's one angle where it looks like he's way in, and, but then you're right, it's not. No, no, but that's the, that's the parallax view angle. Yeah, yeah, that's, the angle. that's why. But this one looked like if you're Barca fans, and I think a lot of them were outraged with that angle, but you don't know. Now, I still believe that it was not a conclusive thing and it would require a really strong evidence to change my mind. Anyways, before I end this video, I do feel bad for Barca. They weren't that bad in the game. I mean, what do you want me to say? They tried, but they couldn't do it. They are not at their best right now. Now, I understand that they have had a few good games recently, but if you analyze the overall season, their performance has been subpar. And compared to that, this was still a better performance. Especially Lamine Yamal, he floats in that right side of the attack and every time he has the ball, I'm on my seat. That second goal for Min Lopez one was all his doing. No complaints for Lopez celebrating though. He'll learn. Rest of their attack, including Lewandowski, Joao Felix, Rafinha, nothing special. Anyways, this Barca team is not the best right now, nor they are at a good moment. Could have taken the benefit of Real Madrid's tiredness, but they couldn't. Real Madrid, on the other hand, were precise. I'm not going into analyzing each and every player, the video is already too long, but Lucas Vasquez, you're the goat. Anyways, no one can deny the fact that Real Madrid players, in terms of their mental strength, are not behind anyone at this moment. And that's how they won this game, and the game at the Etihad as well, about which I've made a video where I have discussed some points which not a lot of people have discussed. You can watch it here. One last point about what Laporta said, that they would want to play a rematch if the goal is legal. Let me just break it down to Barca fans that nothing's gonna happen. Please don't have any hopes for this, he's just saying this to appease the Barca fan base. And that's it. And with that, I end this video. Now you can like the video, make sure you comment and subscribe to Football Ledger. Thank you for watching and see you on the next one. Ciao.